trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the
Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's, uh, it's great to see you all. It's great to be together today for our Sunday worship service. I want you to do me a favor and turn to the person next to you right now and just tell them good morning. I want to see everybody in the screen. Just turn to the person next to you and say good morning to him <laughs> or her. It's just a small gesture, but it means a lot just to acknowledge somebody that is there, to say, how are you? To say, how is everything? To acknowledge them and be happy, to know that it's another day that we have been given this gift of life. Brothers and sisters, it's good to see you. And it's just an amazing morning to know that in UAE, we can worship and fellowship together through Zoom. My name is Nash, and this is my wife, Maricel, and I would like her to read a scripture today. Let's open our Bible and go to Psalm 31, verse 21, and then 23 to 24. Uh, let's read. Praise be to the Lord, for he showed me the wonders of his love when I was in a city under siege. Verse 23. Love the Lord, all his faithful people. The Lord preserves those who are true to him, but the proud he pays back in full. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Even when we seem to be in a, in a mess, you know, when we feel we don't deserve, God still finds a way to show love and kindness to us. You know, and we are made in his image. We have the ability to do the same thing to others. You know, brothers and sisters, let us be kind. Let us show love to our colleagues. I know seems sometimes things sometimes cannot look the way you want them to look. You know, maybe you lost the loved one. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe you're having a difficult time right now, finances. Maybe you're having a difficult time even to trust in God. You know, you don't, you, you, you've lost it. You know, you don't want to believe anymore, you know, but trust in the Lord with all your heart. Things will work out good. I promise you. Today is a wonderful day. Let us be rejoiced and be fired up to worship God. I want to welcome you all. And those who are visiting as friends, I also want to welcome you to the ICOC UAE Church of Christ. Feel loved, feel welcome, and stay tuned for the rest of our service today. We have a great lineup today to worship God. You know, we have our brother from all the way from Abu Dhabi. He will do our communion, our brother Danny and sister Sonia. Let's look forward for this wonderful uh, communion service. We have also our wonderful brother all the way from UK to here. He migrated to here to UAE. Our dear brother Archie is going to do a wonderful sermon for us today. L closely, we have our best friend our, and our dear brother uh, uh, Robert and his wife, Oxil, they are going to do our closing today. Tune in, you know, stay back and just remove everything from your heart. Trust in God in everything and things will always be there to, to God will always be there to motivate you and always God will use people around us to inspire you up. Amen. Take, stay blessed and let's bow down and pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you, God, that you gave us this gift of life today. You know, we, there are so many things around the world right now, but we can worship you and glorify you today, Father God. God, we look forward for this sermon. Be with the brothers and sisters who are going to share today, Father God. Fill them with your Holy Spirit so that they can deliver what we really want to hear today, Father God. Bless the people who are going to receive this message, Father. Remove any spirit of wickedness, any spirit of just...
just uh, negligence, any spirit of just uh, confusion today. Let them receive this message with love and kindness, Father God. We love you so much. We look forward for everything today, Father God. Uh, we bless you. We love you. I pray this trusting and believing through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Weak and wounded sinner, lost and left to die. Oh, raise your head, for love is passing by. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. His blood has washed away the stain So sing to Jesus Sing to Jesus Sing to Jesus And live And like a newborn baby Don't be afraid to crawl And remember when Sometimes we fall So fall on Jesus Fall on Jesus Fall on Jesus And live Sometimes the way is lonely and steep and filled with pain So if your sky is dark and pours the rain Then cry to Jesus Cry to Jesus Cry to Jesus And Music fills the night And when you can't contain your joy inside Then dance for Jesus Dance for Jesus Dance for Jesus With your final heartbeat Kiss the world goodbye Then go in peace And laugh on glory sight And fly to Jesus Fly to Jesus Fly to Jesus And Jesus, fly to Jesus, and live. Good morning, brothers, sisters, and friends. Me and my wife are grateful for this privilege to lead you into this communion. Communion is uh, Jesus' instruction to his followers to remember what he has done and also instruction to celebrate his gospel. You know, I think about Paul, Apostle Paul. If Paul is present today and he will lead our communion this morning, what message will he possibly share to help us remember Jesus and his gospel? Without a doubt, Paul has a lot to share. 
But I believe Paul will share what made him decide to change the course of his life and what motivated him to follow and continue to be grateful to the Lord. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15 to 17, Apostle Paul summarizes his personal experience of the gospel. I will read the scripture. 1 Timothy chapter 1, 15 to 17. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Three things we can learn from Paul in remembering our Jesus. First, in verse 15, he says, it is very important for us to remember why Jesus came. He came to save sinners. Amen. You know, before I studied the Bible and become true followers of Jesus, this popular phrase, Jesus came to save sinners, is not new to me. I have heard it many times since I was young. I have encountered it half the years of my life. And I believe that phrase. But one thing, I never fully understand it and convinced that I was among those sinners. I never see myself in the picture. Back then, I thought I'm fairly doing fine. You know, since my high school, I start reading my Bible. I'm doing my best to do good or to be good son to my parents and to my neighbors. I denounce many religious practices that come to discover that they are not in the Bible. I sound and behave like a pious man, especially to my family and close friends. So I thought I was, I'm close to God. I thought I knew him. I thought I have given my life to him. I thought our relationship clicked. But the truth is, my life is still full of lies and emptiness. There was no real change. There was no inner godly transformation. The truth is, I'm continually living a life of dishonesty, disobedience, pride, and arrogance toward God. And I remember, as I, as I advance my age, so are the level and the caliber of my sins. From minor lying in dishonesty, it upgraded to stealing at home and on my work. From consistent lustful and impure thoughts, it grows to immoral activities and relationships. But when God reaches out to me through his gospel, only then that I learn that I'm not okay. I start to genuinely feel and understand how my own sins, it's destructive and lasting effect on people's lives. I came to understand that Jesus came not merely to show me the list of my failures and sins and saying to me, stop doing that, Danny. That was not the whole message to me by the gospel. Instead, the gospel made me understand that I am guilty of my own sins. But he came to set me free. Jesus came to wipe me clean from my sins and guilt. He came to give me power to live a life not dominated by my weaknesses and sins. And he came to give me salvation that leads to eternal life. The second important thing we need to remember according to Paul is in verse 16. We need to remember Jesus' mercy and his eminence, Amen. patience, Amen. immense patience. My wife will share that. Um, I learned that uh, full acceptance of the fact that I am a sinner and I am believing that Jesus is the Savior is not enough to prove my faith. 
I must be able to display His love through our, through our Christ, through our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 16, Paul used the words immense patience. Love is patient, said Paul to his amazing definitions of love to the Corinthians. Patience is a virtue that I confess I am a long way to go. Even in my silence, I knew that in my heart I felt pride and sometimes disappointment towards others. I tried to do the best I can for my own personal ministry, but I had almost begun to ignore the faithlessness that I can see in myself in those people around me. I tried to accept or even provide excuses to those who doesn't join in our fellowship. I settled with the idea that the Bible is enough if, if our members will just, you know, give time to study and read it, to correct themselves, to train themselves, and to disciple themselves. I just assumed that spiritual growth and maturity is just a mere personal responsibility. And I do not, I should not concern myself more on it. Patience is to persevere with one another. That is what I learned in verse 16. I realized that Jesus' love and his grace must keep me going, and I don't need more reason not to do so. Amen. The third thing we need to remember in communion, according to Paul, is to keep our hearts humble and grateful. In verse 17, we can read, Paul couldn't stop praising God. I believe, and it's understandable and expectedly normal, that a grateful heart cannot be restrained to express the wonderful things that are going on inside. If a heart is truly grateful to God, we will find a means of expressing itself at once and every time. Visiting friends, how convinced are you that Jesus can forgive you and change your life and be saved? And to my fellow believers, do you still appreciate the immense patience of the Lord, both in our past and in the present daily lives. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, our Father in heaven, we pray that we don't forget the reason why you came to this world of sinners. Help us to continue to display your love through Christ Jesus. And always remember your amazing grace. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace and give you peace and give you peace and give you peace.
of the International Churches of Christ. And today we bring you good news from right here in Fort Worth, Texas. All the Texas family of church leaders are together to dream and have a vision for Texas. I can see the excitement, the unity of the brothers and sisters coming together, planning to take our churches to deeper levels, greater heights. Here's some good news from our Texas family of churches. We have um, a robust uh, deaf community in Austin, and then we had an entire service that was led and preached in ASL and translated into the spoken language. It was just a very unifying event. The Dallas City Group is combined of the downtown, uptown, and surrounding neighborhoods of Dallas. We've seen baptisms, restorations, and we now have two freshman campus students at SMU for the first time in years. One of the most encouraging things was being able to send Jeff and Amanda Henderson in the middle of COVID down to Brazil to uh, help the leadership of the congregation there. As we build God's churches, we have a goal to really represent well in Orlando in 2022 with our brothers and sisters throughout the United States and the world. Stop us, and if our God is with us, 
Then what could stand against? Then what could stand against? Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Thank you. It's um, great to be with everyone here this morning. And uh, it's, uh, I, I think the, the Dubai churches and the UA churches are fantastic. And certainly Gerald and I have really been refreshed being here. It's, it's been totally amazing. And um, what I'm going to preach on this morning is a topic in all my years of teaching and preaching, I've never taught on before. So, um, and I want you in the chat, uh, having, uh, uh, having leading the uh, youth ministry here with Art and Nikki, who are fantastic, you know, we, we, we start off with a bit of um, interaction. And so I want you to guess what I'm talking about as I'm introducing on the chat. So what is going to be my theme? And uh, these, these appear on the first page of the Bible the first psalm, and the last page of Revelation. Other than God and people, they are the most mentioned living thing in the Bible. Can anyone guess what they are? Okay, I'll continue on while, you, while anybody puts a guess in the chat. Any, any, any takers yet? Okay, they were mentioned in loads of significant events, from the fall, the flood, to the overthrow of Pharaoh, the crucifixion, and the second coming. We've got angels mentioned here. Uh, anything else? A living thing. The Holy Spirit, that's true. They were there too. But this is mentioned other than God and people more than any other thing, living thing, at the, these times. Okay. Um, obviously, it's mentioned in the first creatures. Yes, yeah, but a bit more than creatures. Okay, uh, let's think. It was there in Genesis, and it's in the last chapter, the Lamb. Yeah, it's the last chapter of the Bible. That also is true. Um, Abraham sat under these. Uh, Joseph was called a tree, the Marinos. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. Trees are mentioned, more, uh, the most often living thing it mentioned in the Bible outside of God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and, uh, and people. Trees are the most common thing mentioned. You know, and, um, you know, Zacchaeus climbed the tree when the blind man saw for the first time people looked like trees in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Mount of Olives, which is an amazing place. There are lots of old olive trees. You know, Jesus was hung on a tree. And so these are very significant things. And I know the theme of the church this year is perseverance. And if there's a living thing that perseveres more than anything else, it has to be a tree. There's some of the most long-lived species on the earth. In fact, if I can share my screen and... Uh, I can show you a picture of, here we go, here, yeah. okay, can you all see that? Can you see it? Great, okay, fantastic. That is one of the oldest trees in the world, it's four to five thousand years old. So this tree existed when Jesus walked the earth. And so some of the, there's some of the most persevering things in nature you know and he, you can even tell how old they are by just cutting them down and counting the rings god created them in that way so there are two points i've got today firstly you are a tree of growth 
And secondly, you are a tree of strength. And in Matthew um, 13, here's a uh, couple more trees. In Matthew 13, Jesus said, he told them a parable. Um, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Though it is all, sorry, I'll have to get my, Matthew 13 in verse 31. We can turn there. Matthew 13 in verse 31. Give you times to find it, even though it is on the screen. It says, he told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, Yet, when it grows, it is the largest of the garden plants and becomes a tree. So the birds come and perch in its branches. Now, this is uh, just such a, an encouraging verse. And I'm just going to stop the share for a second. So, yeah, here we go. And um, to me, this is one of the most um, unbelievable passages in the Bible because it's the natural way of things. You know, if we persevere, if we stay around, we are going to grow. That is the natural state of people, of churches, of, of anything you go through in life. If you persevere at it, you grow, you mature, uh, because God allows that to happen. It's not as though the mustard seed grows and puts lots of effort into growing. I've got to grow, I've got to grow. It just stays around and God just allows it to grow. And I, I want to show you a, a little video, so I'm going to share my screen again. It's from Jurassic Park, which is a great film. And uh, it's about, you know, how they genetically engineered um, the dinosaurs from DNA. And they, genet they designed them all as females um, so they wouldn't be able to breed and they'd be able to contain them. And there's a classic line that Jeff um, Goldblum makes, which I'm going to play now. How do you know they're all female? Does somebody yeah. go out in the park and pull up the dinosaur skirts? We control their chromosomes. It's really not that difficult. All vertebrate embryos are inherently female anyway. They just require an extra hormone given at the right developmental stage to make them male. But we simply deny them that. Deny them that? John, the kind of control you're attempting is... Uh, it's not possible. Listen, if there's one thing the history of evolution has taught us, it's that life will not be contained. Life breaks free, it expands to new territories, and it crashes through barriers painfully, maybe even dangerously, but... Uh, well, there it is. There it is. You're implying that a group composed entirely of female animals will breed? No, I'm, I'm simply saying that life uh, finds a way. Yeah, I love that clip. You know, when Jeff Goldblum basically says, life finds a way. You know, there's a, um, life breaks free, life expands to new territories, painfully, even dangerously, but life finds a way. And that's true of growth. You know, growth will always find a way. You know, I, I'm amazed here that, um, Outside our, our house, we have just a, a paved area, a little area just before we go out to our gate. And it hardly rains in the UAE. You know, I come from Great Britain, it rains all the time. And yet in that front area, already plants grow up. Life just finds a way. You know, somehow something, even in the tiniest little cracks between the, the paving stones, Plants grow, trees grow, you know, out of nowhere, they, they, they seem to find a way. And um, the mustard seed, even though it didn't become the largest plants overnight, after years and years of growth, it became that way. And it became a, a place, a place of shade, a place where birds and animals, uh, birds could take shade and, uh, uh, and it became a shelter uh, for other animals. In the same way as, as we as disciples grow and mature, we become um, places of shade and place, places where other people can thrive around us. You know, I, I think of people like Chris Grizzell. You know, he's like, like me, he's been around quite some time and yet he's such a great guy, always giving. 
and I met an employee of his, uh, you know, over a month ago, and uh, who worked for Fly Dubai. And I said, ah, oh, do you know Chris Grizzell? And he said, yeah, yeah, I know Chris. Such a wonderful person to work for. You know, such an amazing guy. He's so kind. He's so, I, I love working for Chris Grizzell. And he was overflowing in praise for Chris Grizzell. You know, and Chris didn't become a, a kind, caring, loving person overnight. It takes years of maturity and of growing and God works in your life. So as a disciple, wherever you are, you grow. That is the natural way of God. He allows you to grow. And as you grow, you help other people more and more. I think of Gigi. You know, she's a single mom. She struggles through life, but has two amazing daughters, Jonelle and Danielle. What great girls. It's such a, a joy to work with in the youth ministry. Goes through challenges in life and yet grows through it all. And the, the encouraging thing about life is that if you just persevere, you will grow. There's no option. That's just the way life works. That's the natural order of things. And so as you go through life, every time you're tempted to gossip, but you hold back, you grow. Every time you're tempted to look again at something you shouldn't, but you don't, you grow. Every time you're tired, you've had a hard day at work, and yet you have a meeting to go to, or brother or sister to get with, but you say, no, I'm gonna do this, you, you grow. Every time you are really tempted to lose your temper, but you show a bit of self-control, you take a step back, and instead of being angry, a uh, blessing in kindness, you grow. You know, I, um, I've recently taken up playing badminton. And on a Wednesday night, Geraldine and I played badminton together. And uh, Geraldine is an incredible player. She's amazing at badminton. I've only just taken it up. And I go, we go to this club. Geraldine's one of the best women there. I am by far and away the worst man. And I, I say to Geraldine, it's my weekly dose of humility. And... Uh, and it's a, a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And we go most Wednesdays. And, you know, I, but I say to people half my age, you know, uh, tell me where to stand. I'm only just taking this up. Where should I stand? How do you want to play this? How, how can I learn how to do this better? How can I, and you know what? I'm becoming a better badminton player just from being humble and around better players. And uh, one guy's given me a bit of coaching. And, you know, it's encouraging seeing you grow in any area of life and any new sport you take up or new skill you acquire. And, you know, spiritually, when was the last time? It's easy when, when you play a sport or even at work, if you don't understand something, you go to somebody and say, you know, can you tell me about this? If I take an x-ray at work and I don't understand what I see, I ask a colleague, can you, can you, can you have a look at this? Can you tell me what you think? You know, and it's a natural thing that a lot of us do in life. But what about spiritually? When was the last time you said to somebody, what, what do you see in me I need to change? You know, what areas in my life uh, did you see that I could do better in? You know, bro, you know, ha, and going to your brother or your sister in the church and asking your closest friends how, you know, Geraldine was always great with this, with, our, with bringing up our kids. You know, we lived, we weren't particularly close. We had a family group where we lived. We weren't close to a large church. And so we used to have people come and stay with us for the weekend, other families and other people we knew. And Geraldine would always ask them, you know, what do you make of our family? You know, how can I be a better mum? How can I, what do you see in our kids here that we could do a better job with? And they were just so eager to learn and to, she, she was so eager to learn and grow. And that's part of the reason she's such an amazing mum is that she's learned from other people and observed other people. And so what do you need to be a tree of growth? You know, you will grow, but you need an atmosphere that you can grow in. You need, to, you need the sun, you need rain, you need fertilizer, you need all these things to grow in. So how can you grow the most? You know, we all know a standard thing to pray and to read the scriptures every day. That's just so important. I know there are days 
And the days that I just really don't feel like it, or I don't feel I have time, or you know, I'm just not motivated to turn to God. And then deciding, no, no, I'm, I, I'm going to do this. Even when you feel really down, deciding, no, this is the time. I'm going to make time to pray. Having close friends who are disciples. You know, there's so many one another scriptures in the, in the Bible. And having close friends you can talk to about your life and to developing new friends as well. Who, who have some, some areas that you look at and you think, oh, they're amazing, they're incredible like that. Having those kind of um, heart to, to look for areas that you see other people doing well in and asking them how they how they do in that. You know, and finally, you know, you need a coach. In badminton, if I'm going to improve, I need a coach. In life, you need someone who can help you be a better husband, be a better wife, be a better father, be a better mother, be a better son. I mean, that's why we have the church, so we can help each other out in these areas. So that's my first point today, is really to be a tree of growth. And my second point is to be a tree of strength. And um, I'll just go back to my desktop here. And, um, you know, Trees go through different phases in life. Even in, in the midst of winter when they're barren, there is still strength. And, you know, we in our garden have an apple tree and uh, back in the UK. And in winter, it's barren. It looks dead. Um, then in springtime, it comes out in this most beautiful blossom, this lovely pink blossom. Then in summer, it's covered in green leaves. And then in autumn time, it produces so many apples that we, even as a family of six that we were when we lived together in that house, we couldn't get rid of all the apples. And anybody who'd come around the house would send away with a bag of apples. It was just so fruitful. But it would go through those seasons. And, you know, as you get, as you live life, you realize that life has its seasons. Um, as it says in Ecclesiastes, there's time for everything or a season for everything. You know, we go through seasons in life. Churches go through seasons as they grow. You know, a tree of strength recognizes those seasons and accepts them. You know, a tree needs to persevere through the winter to blossom in the summer and to bear fruit in the autumn. And there's a verse, John chapter, um, John chapter 12, we can turn there, John chapter 12, Verses 24 and 25. John chapter 12, verses 24 and 25. It says, very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. And then a, a parallel verse is in Galatians 2.20. It says, I have been crucified with Christ and no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live now, I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, in order to grow, you need to die. And... You need to go through winter to blossom in the springtime. You need to and bear fruit in the autumn. And sometimes winters can be bitter. They can be cold. They can be barren. And all of us at times in our life will go through a winter. You know, we'll go through a hard time. Something will completely unexpected will happen that knocks us back and uh, I think for, for Geraldine and I you know one of the worst times in our life was as many of you know in back in 2003 Geraldine and I were in the ministry we totally loved the ministry for us it was more than a job it was a dream it was a calling it was a lifestyle it's something that we had given our hearts totally to and then, obviously, in, in 2003, things kind of fell apart a bit. 
And um, we ended up with four small children, two preschool, and uh, with out of place to live. And um, the disciples were great, but you know, it's okay. Most of us, if someone doesn't have a house, you say, okay, come and stay with us for a bit. And if they're a couple, you think, oh, that's no problem. You can, you can stay with us. But if they're a couple with four kids, two of which are preschool, we went to stay with our friends of ours and one of our toddlers took their photographs off their wall and, and smashed some of them, you know, by mistake. It was an accident, but, you know, it was like, but we could tell it was we stayed with people, we were being a burden for them. So for 40 days, it was, it was, it was kind of almost, it's very spiritual. For 40 days, we had nowhere to live. All our belongings were in the back of our car and we'd go from place to place. And uh, finally we got a house and we, we moved into that. And, you know, we were, we were jobless, homeless, you know, and if you've been in the ministry for 15 years, finding another job isn't particularly easy. And uh, thankfully we found, you know, jobs and I had to retrain and, and go through all of that. And it was, it was an unbelievably challenging time. And, you know, I remember sitting thinking, the way I feel now, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. And I knew that because, you know, you, you, you're just struggling every month to make ends meet, to try and support your family. To, uh, and, but it was the worst of times, but it was the best of times. Because, you know, looking back on it, and, you know, at the time it's really difficult, but looking back on it, it was the time that I really grew. You know, God had to put me through this. I, I understood so clearly the sternness and the kindness of God. God was so kind to me because he looked, through, looked after me through, through that time. He delivered me. But he was also stern. He was saying some things in your life, Archie, you've really got to change. It's the arrogance that you have. You know, you could be kinder. You could be more graceful. You could be more loving. You could be more gentle. You could be more like Christ. And all those things I learned during that time. Before that time, if somebody would come to me and say, look, I'm struggling to pray, I would say, what's your problem? The, it's the, the creator of the universe loves you. His son died for you. What do you mean you can't? You struggle to pray. But then during that time, I struggled to pray. I knew what it was like to, you know, to, to find it so hard to go to God. And I understood so much more. And only through that could I grow. Only through my winter could I face another springtime and another summer. Only through that could I be a better father. Could I be a better husband? Could I be a better disciple? Could I be a better, more like Jesus? And sometimes in life, sometimes when hard things happen, we act like spoiled children. God, I'm your son. Why are you putting me through this? And yet, when we got baptized, we made the decision that Jesus is Lord. You know, we made the decision not that we would follow Jesus. And if we are going to follow Jesus, that means we die to ourselves. And in order to die, that is the only way to grow. And it's in following Jesus. Jesus is life, the most powerful person who ever existed and walked this earth ended up dying painfully on the cross. And in the same way, it shouldn't surprise us when we face difficulties. And the, 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 the most important thing, and the thing I'd urge you the most, is when you face difficulties, either in your job or in the church or spiritually or in your marriage or in your family, the worst thing is to get bitter. You know, I, I found this out when I was leaving our house in the UK. I needed to, to kill this tree that was causing some problems before we rented our house out. And you know, you can kill a tree by getting a copper nail and hammering it into that, into that tree. That nail slowly but surely will kill a tree. In the same way, 
a root of bitterness will kill you spiritually. And when you go through these challenging times, either you grow through it or you become bitter. Those are the only two choices that you have. And what I can guarantee you, I can assure you with all my heart, having been through many winters, after every winter comes a springtime. As surely as the seasons come and go, after every bad time, there will be a good time. You know, these things, I don't know what phase in life you're at right now, whether you're in a winter, whether you're in a springtime. If you're in springtime, enjoy blossoming. If you're in the summer, enjoy basking in the sun. If you're in the autumn, enjoy bearing fruit. Whatever season you're in, make the most of it. If you're going through a winter, be assured there will be a springtime and it will come. It's surely as the seasons come in the earth. And I don't know, wherever you are in life, whatever you are, you know, you have to give your heart. You know, I was, I was so impressed with Moadami when he came, as many of you know, you know, I shared in the leaders meeting that he was a man who was only here for a few days. He's been through obviously a challenging time, his, his own winter in many respects, which is far worse than I, I could imagine. And yet he impacted me, he impacted many of us with his lessons, with his giving spirit, with his heart. But only for a few days he was here. Some of us are here for a few months. Some of us just a few more months and then we're going somewhere else. Dubai is a transitional place. Some of us are here for years. Some of us think we're here for a year, but end up staying eight years. We don't know how long God will keep us wherever we are. But we used to have a saying in the church, you bloom where you're planted. And so wherever God has put you, whatever area of Dubai, our area of the UAE, our area of the west of the, west of the world, it's an opportunity to give your heart and bloom where you're planted, whether it's a few days, whether it's a few weeks, whether it's a few months, whether it's decades. It's a matter of giving your heart where you are. It's so easy to think, oh, let me live here, make some money and then go back home or go here and then I'll be happy and then I'll be able to. No, make the most of every day that God gives you because you know wherever you are in, in life, if you're in a winter, it will become a springtime. If you're in a springtime, it will become a summer. If you're in a summer, it will be a fruitful autumn. Whatever season of life you're in, whatever geographical area of life you're in, give your heart where you are, bloom where you're planted. So those are two basic admonitions today. Firstly, be a tree of growth. You know, set, put yourself in an atmosphere where you can grow spiritually. You know, seek after God, seek after relationships with one another, you know, and decide, no, no, I'm going to make that a priority. I, I don't feel like, you know, all of us sometimes make appointments week in, weeks in advance to go somewhere. I was at, a, uh, I was at a, uh, an event two, two, two weeks ago, and uh, a stand-up comic was saying, you know, a lot of you, before you came out tonight, were thinking, why did I sign up to come tonight? I prefer to just stay in bed and watch Netflix. But, you know, so often... You, you, you put yourself out and you think, well, why did I make that commitment? But then you go and you're so glad you did. You know, relationships are like that. They take effort. They take time. But make the effort with relationships to be a, a, um, a, a tree of growth. And secondly, be a tree of strength. Understand that life has its seasons. And whatever season you're going through, you will go to another season. There is a time for everything. Thanks for your time today. And um, I appreciate the chance to, to share these words with you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Can you hear us? Okay. Thank you, Archie, for this great message. Uh, point number one, you are a tree of growth. Point number two, you are a tree of strength. Trees are an excellent metaphor to describe the resilience of the human self. Let us ask someone, our friend, our spouse, 
what we need to change so that we could continue to grow. As many of us face challenges uh, in life, loneliness, anxiety, and fear in these recent times, we may have trouble remembering or drawing upon the strength we possess that often carry us through the difficult times. So brothers and sisters, uh, we need to persevere. Uh, all this will pass absolutely. All these difficult times will pass. God will make us find a way. We should be like a tree who is deep rooted with the Lord, with the word of God, tall and steady, shedding and renewing with the change of seasons, enduring and growing. Amen. Uh, for me, uh, what I can get uh, for that. And anyway, thank you so much again, uh, Archie, for that uh, lesson uh, that you're a tree of growth as a person who, uh, whose heart and mind are immersed on the word of God and continues to obey what was written in the Bible. Uh, it will grow and flourish like what mentioned uh, in the Psalms, chapter 1, verse 3, that that person is like a tree planted by the stream of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, prospers. And secondly, that he said, uh, you're a tree of strength. It's like a person is deep rooted uh, with the understanding of the word of God because his delight is in the law of the Lord. As mentioned also in Psalms chapter 1, verse 2, a person who meditates on his law day and night is, is strong against any weather because it is deeply rooted on the word of God, deeply rooted on the ground. So it will stay strong. So brothers and sisters, my challenge for all of us is to continue to grow and dig deeper on the word of God. And for the friends and visitors are here, uh, I ask you to uh, ask the person who invited you to join, who invited you in joining this worship service to study the Bible and learn how to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So it is, it is through the word of God that we can grow maturely and be strong in our relationship with our God. And so we can enjoy and others, other people around us will take shelter on us also. Thank you so much uh, again, uh, Archie and also, I want to thank Nas and Maricel for that one wonderful welcome. And also for uh, Danny and Sonia for uh, taking us to the cross and uh, remembering about the uh, patience, the immense patience of uh, Jesus. Uh, even though we fail a lot of times every day, he's patient on us in order for us to grow maturely and be strong spiritually. Amen. Thank you so much uh, for that, for the announcement. Uh, allow my uh, beautiful wife to uh, read the announcement. Okay. Um, please note that the recording of this worship service will be available on the ICOC UAE channel on YouTube for those who could not attend this morning. The next week meeting is on the 17th of April, 2022, Sunday, through Zoom meeting. We plan to have a six midweek devotional with Mark Templer starting on Tuesday, May 17th until 21st of June, 2022. Topic will be the cross of the Savior. Please do mark your calendar. Bible talk leaders will have their meeting this afternoon, 4 p.m. at the mezzanine floor of City Season Hotel in Deira. KKC or Kingdom Kids will have their meeting today. Please check with your individual uh, KKC coordinators for the plan ahead for these classes. 
The teens will have their meeting on Friday evenings, 8 p.m. Our midweek meeting this Tuesday or Wednesday will be as decided by the individual Bible talk leader. If you are visiting today, please speak to the person who invited you to know the Zoom meeting details for the midweek meeting. Regular monthly contributions can be handed in to your respective finance representative or your Bible talk leader. Kindly uh, keep Ukraine church and their country in our prayers. Pray for peace and protection. Uphold each other in prayer, especially those that are affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Stay safe and follow all recommended safety practices in place. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, let's uh, bow our head and pray. Our dear Lord God, uh, our Father in heaven, thank you so much for allowing us to hear uh, from uh, your words. Thank you so much for allowing uh, uh, allowing uh, Archie to uh, use in order for us to uh, listen and understand uh, your words. And Father, thank you so much for that uh, reminding us that uh, we need to grow Wherever we are, we need to uh, mature and we need to bloom in order for us to uh, give glory to you. Father, help us, Lord. Uh, help us uh, on our struggles, whatever it may be. Please be with us always and keep on protecting us from uh, this pandemic. And I pray that uh, you continue to uh, help us on our uh, journey in this life. Help us, O oh God, to uh, grow uh, immensely in order for us to be a shelter to other people around us and mm. able for us to uh, be a blessing to others mm. instead of uh, being, uh, being uh, focused on ourselves. But help us, O oh God, to uh, just share this, this knowledge that, uh, that we have with you, mm. our relationship with you to uh, to other people around us. Mm. Father, we praise you, Lord. We love you. And we pray all this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Sending on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises Standing on the promises, Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing on the promises Promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises, promises. standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing on the promises, standing on the promises. Of God. I'm standing on the promises of God.